Ladies and gentlemen, with us now is talk show host Mickey Burns. I had the opportunity to go to his set and I invited him to mine. Welcome to the show. How are you? Donna Drake, thank you for having me on your program. Uh, I, I'm a viewer and a fan and uh, it's an honor to be on your show today. Now, how did you start Profiles? I started Profiles about 15 years ago. Uh, we were uh, doing a news magazine for Time Warner at the time called Special Edition and each episode always had a a short entertainment section. So I was interviewing people like Danny Aiello and John Amos and uh, the segment only called for three or four minutes but I would get these 20, 25 <laughs> minute great interviews and, and I said to one of the editors at the time, I said, you know, we should do a show specifically a profile overview of these celebrities because they have a lot to say and a lot to talk about. So that was the birth of Profiles about 15 years ago, offshoot of a news magazine that we were doing. Now when did you yourself know that you had become a celebrity and an icon? Huh. Like were you walking down the street and somebody said, I want your autograph. Like how did you know that you had made that transition? Uh, I just think it's, it's from being on the air for so, for so long. Uh, being on for 15 years, people say, oh yeah, I, I've seen you on TV. and. Uh, so it, it, it comes over time, repetition, consistency, uh, and, and we're still there. So as long as they, they'll have us, we'll continue doing the show. Did you ever get any like marriage proposals or any fun like fan letters or? <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of fan letters with suggestions. A lot okay. of times they say, you know, uh, get rid of your blue shirt, then like your tie, <laughs> stuff like that. But most of it's positive, uh, surprisingly. Very nice. And when you uh, watch your own show, right, do you, do you have like a surreal experience? Do you realize that it's you doing it? Yeah, uh, not really. What, okay. I, what I try to do is learn from every episode. You know, I watch it closely to see how, how the questions were asked. Uh, did, did I uh, trip over the answers and, and nip the, the uh, person I'm interviewing? So you're always trying to fine tune uh, the presentation and to see how you can make it better, you know, and, and there's always room for improvement no matter what, what the episode, no matter how good it is, you always see something you'd like to improve on. Because you're doing very much like what I'm doing, you're executive producing and oh, yeah. hosting, right? So yeah. you're trying, in your head, you're trying to wear those double hats, right? Uh, absolutely. And I feel like um, responsible for all of my cast, you know, and all of my crew. <laughs> and I, when I was on your set, I thought it was so wonderful because you, you really do have a rapport with you know all of the people that are working on your team and I call it my live it up family are right. you guys very much the same way with profiles well, pretty much I mean we've had the same editor for 15 12 years and the, the team has been together a long time because it's it's not so much a job as it is a passion we all love what we do uh, so the longevity of uh, uh, the team ha has been good you've had some really amazing people over the years that you've interviewed can you maybe highlight like two or three and and why they meant so much to you uh, sure I mean we've done people from all walks of the entertainment industry uh, I remember uh, doing uh, or interviewing Dr. Maya Angelou maybe 10 years ago and uh, I said man what, what an honor to, 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 have, to be able to sit down with her and uh, just try to hang in there with her. You know, she was so intelligent, and you, and you want to make something compelling and interesting. So I, I, I was wondering if I was over my head. And, and right after that, we did Joe Montana, the football great. <laughs> and the interesting story with Joe Montana is uh, we were doing it in, in his hotel room in, in Manhattan because he was here for a book signing or something like that. And when we got to the room, uh, there was a beautiful spread of cold cuts and chicken. I said, man, this is great business, you know, they feed you and everything else. So my crew and I, we ate and then we set up. And, and just be five minutes before the interview, uh, Joe's uh, PR person came in and said, how you done? He said, who ate Joe's food? That was evidently Joe's dinner. And, and all so of we, that? All of that. So we learn, you learn as you go. <laughs> Always ask first. Always ask first. That's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and any any uh, guest ever make you cry? I always ask the same question uh, at the end of every uh, episode, and that is, what do you hope your legacy might be? And sometimes it's more than they can handle, uh, and then they start tearing up, and, and I have to hold it back sometimes myself because it's a, it's a very sensitive question, and you never know what you're going to get. 
Uh, is there like a short list of people you still want to do? Uh, I think so. I okay. mean, I mean, we just did uh, Engelbert Humperdinck last, nice. not too long ago, and 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 Tom Jones is on our hit list. Always wanted to do the actor Robert Wagner, and we'll be doing him in um, in November. Wonderful. So there's always there's always that. You know, once you're finished, like you're here today producing this episode. Just like with us, once you finish with an interview, the next day you're off to the next and the next and the next. And we'll be celebrating our 400th episode uh, later on this fall. Congratulations. Yeah, thank so you. fantastic. So in your own personal journey, it's not yeah. like you just woke up and became a talk show host. No. So tell me about a little bit about your experience as a person and how you overcame that. Uh, sure. Okay. I, I mean, I grew, grew up on Staten Island in the South Beach projects. And when it came time for me, uh, it was after I was a baby boomer, and when it was time for me to go to college, you know, uh, my parents said, are you going to go to college? Nobody in my family had been there before. And I said, I'd love to. And they said, well, you better get a scholarship because they couldn't afford to send me. So that was the first obstacle, figuring out a way to get to college uh, without any money. And my out was athletics. And I, I was able to uh, obtain a, a football scholarship, and I went to school in Missouri. And, 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 and from there, I think, once you have that kind of background where you have to kind of fight for, for every goal that you're trying to attain, it becomes a lifestyle. And, and you become determined, and, and you're always working towards accomplishing uh, the, the next uh, goal that you have ahead of you. So my first goal was to get into college, and then I was an athlete, and then I... I was a teacher for a while, and, and uh, once I went into being a talk show host, I think you take those same work ethics that got you to this far uh, in your daily uh, work experience. And when I was researching you, yeah. that's why I thought we had knew, e knew each other because yeah. I grew up and said it was Missouri. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. called you on yeah, the phone yeah, yeah. and I said to you, I said, I said, wait, I said, uh, do I know you from Missouri? And you're like, mm. no, I don't think that's where you know each other from. Right. Um, but I similar. You know, I was the yeah. first person in my family also, and even my father uh, said to me, he goes, you know, girls don't really go to college. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, I'm going, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It just wasn't something that he had experienced, yeah. and I've, I've found many different things over my life, too, whether it was being bullied when I was little or just trying to uh, accomplish something. And I feel yeah. just like you, it's an honor when someone allows you to interview them. You yeah, know, when you, I've yeah. seen you work magic with your guest. Well, thank I've, you for I've that. seen, you know, it's true. I've seen you bring um, certain people to a level of what they didn't even know about themselves. Mm -hmm. Right? So some of the portraits that you've done over the years have really um, brought a testament to that. So I, I thank you very much for being here. I really uh, yeah, do. It's really been you've my, got, my yeah. honor and pleasure, <laughs> and I enjoy your show. Keep up the good work. Thank you. It's a great show. Thank you. So profiles, uh, you've got uh, Robert Wagner coming up and a whole yeah, bunch of other people yeah, on your guest yeah, list. Yeah, and uh, I was saying, I looked at yours too, and I said, oh, he did this person, Robert Davi. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I interviewed yeah. Robert Davi. And then you did, I was like, oh, this yeah, is so yeah. much fun. So thank you very much for being here. Here. Keep up the good work. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you. Darling. All right. Stay tuned for more on Live It Up. We've been visiting with Mickey Burns from Profiles.